former cabinet secretary Dr. Ben Carson reacts to the Biden-Harris administration's pro-abortion agenda. Dr. Carson, a retired neurosurgeon and pro-life advocate, shares his disappointment in the current White House administration's handling of life issues. He says modern science and technology only help people to better understand what's in a mother's womb, an unborn child. Here is part one of our interview with Dr. Ben Carson. Joining us now on Skype is Dr. Ben Carson, the founder and chairman of the American Cornerstone Institute. Thank you for joining us. As a former cabinet secretary, I first want to ask, what has been your reaction to the Biden-Harris administration's actions on abortion so far? Well, so far I've been a, a little disappointed, only because there seems to be a, a significant number of people, uh, particularly left-leaning people, who don't realize the sacredness of human life. And, uh, you know, when a baby who has a heartbeat, who has little eyes and ears and fingers and toes, who actually moves around, when you can consider that a meaningless bunch of cells, I think there's probably some departure from reality. Mm -hmm. And we need to reassess the way we think about these things, particularly as science and technology have given us the ability to evaluate what's in that mother's womb. And we know it's much more sophisticated than anything that we thought before. And a, a, a baby, a fetus, is much more complex than snail darters and some of the things that we go through so much trouble to try to say. Mm. The last time we spoke, I had the privilege of interviewing you in your role as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development about your Foster Youth to Independence Initiative, which helps provide housing to foster youth who are aging out of foster care. Dr. Carson, did you see your work with foster care going hand in hand with your pro-life beliefs? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just uh, the womb, it's the whole life, it's the tomb, the entire life that is so vitally important. And, you know, Christ died for everybody. And we should love everybody. We should love our neighbor. That's what our Judeo Christian values tell us. And particularly, we should pay attention to those who are disenfranchised, those who are poor. There's so many verses in the Bible about that. Plus, you know, when you stop and think about it, doesn't it make you feel good when you can help somebody who's in need? Mm. And what about your work with the homeless at HUD? Did you see that as an extension of your pro-life beliefs as well? Absolutely. Uh, you know, particularly uh, the people who have mental illness, who have drug addictions, you know, sometimes we look asconce at them and say, well, you know, they created that problem. In many cases, they did not create that problem. And, uh, you know, a lot of the drug addicts, uh, you know, if they could push a button and they wouldn't be addicted anymore, they would wear that button out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy for us to look at them and say, you know, that's their problem. But it's it's all of our problem as compassionate human beings. And uh, we have a responsibility not just to put them in housing, that's housing first, but to say housing second is to diagnose the reason that they're on the street, and housing third is to try to fix it. That's what real compassion is about. You served as head secretary essentially for the entire Trump presidency from 2017 to 2021. In your cabinet meetings throughout those four years, how much did the pro-life topic come up? How much of a priority would you say it was in the previous administration? Uh, it was a big priority. It, it came up many times. And, uh, you know, I didn't really hear anybody voicing opposition to the pro-life stance. We fully recognize the importance of every human life. And it came up also during a lot of the discussions about Black Lives Matter. Mm. Uh, you know, all lives matter. And, and black babies in particular who are being murdered at disproportionately high rates by organizations like Planned Parenthood. Mm. You began your time in politics when you ran for the U.S. presidency in 2016. I have to ask, Dr. Carson, would you consider running for president again? Well, I didn't particularly want to run then. <laughs> it was all the run, Ben, run people, all the petitions. I had 500,000 petitions in my office. Uh, but I will always do what God wants me to do. Uh, it's certainly not my preference, though. 
Well, since leaving your role as head secretary, you have launched the American Cornerstone Institute. Tell us about your group's mission and how you plan to advance the pro-life agenda in your new role as chairman. Well, interestingly enough, uh, as uh, our time in the last administration was coming to a close, you know, we were thinking about all the things that we had started, all the principles that we had espoused, and we didn't want to just let those go away. And uh, so a group of us uh, from HUD started the American Cornerstone Institute, basically looking at those cornerstone principles that were responsible for allowing America to go from a bunch of ragtag militiamen to the pinnacle of the world in record time. Mm -hmm. And that would be things like our faith, which teaches us how to interact with our fellow man, um, and also our liberty, which is a key factor that, that caused people to want to come to America. And then also our community. It was our communities that worked so hard that built themselves because people were willing to work together, people with different skills, uh, different talents. And, uh, and then finally, life. And as we've moved further away from our respect of life, from the womb to the tomb, we've become much more coarse and much more callous in our interactions toward each other. So we want to re-elevate those things, re-push them. Uh, we have multiple uh, conversation series that you can find on AmericanCornerstone.org. Uh, we're doing uh, town halls and roundtables in different parts of the country, inviting people from different perspectives uh, to talk about solutions with the facts on the middle of the table. Not ideology, but with facts. We're starting a little Patriots program this summer. It's already uh, started. In, in which we are trying to bring uh, the principles to our youngest individuals mm -hmm. so that they understand why this country came to be and what those principles are and uh, in contradistinction to critical race theory and some of the things that denigrate our, our great nation and, mm -hmm. and bring people to shame and victimhood. Those are certainly not the right kinds of things to be teaching mm -hmm. our young people. Next week, we will air part two of our interview with Dr. Carson. He shares how operating on unborn children helped to shape his strong pro-life views today.